Welcome to Expedition Scenist. Join us this week as we travel from the frosty north to the Florida Keys, where we provision the boat and explore the natural beauty of the mangrove islands and the many plants and creatures that call it home. just arrived here in the Keys. Three days of driving. I'm exhausted. But we're here safe and sound. And, uh, and to make sure things arrive safely, we, uh, we went through a lot of checks. And one of them is to make sure that you strap the boat down really well. You know, get yourself a good trailer, but all, obviously you want to have the straps. Like this is not just your, your average little um, tie down strap. This is a, a, a big strong one and uh, it does hold the boat well and uh, these things when you first buy them they they stretch so for the first couple times you use it you wonder why they keep getting loose and you think maybe it's slipping here but it's not it's actually the webbing is actually stretching so you know take that in consideration so if you're making a trip all the way to florida with brand new straps or making a long drive anywhere you're going to want to periodically stop like when we left our home uh, I drove for about half an hour and then I got out and I checked the straps and every time we stopped for fuel I checked the straps and I checked the tires so that's something that's that's important for safety that's for sure uh, anyway so that we're gonna take off to launch this boat <clears throat> also what we did is we put this it's almost like it's it's heavier than uh, what you call saran wrap but it's it's fairly thick I don't know what the millimeters of this is but it's a plastic adhesive that doesn't have glue on it. Yeah, exactly. Key, right? So it, it sticks, right? It sticks, see? Yes, it sticks. And then it, but it doesn't leave any glue on no. the hull of the boat. No, it doesn't. Window, so you and don't then, have anything so to you clean can, up. So what, what this does is, so this is not going to stop um, rock uh, dings, obviously. It's too thin. Um, but what it does is, for instance, uh, just the non-stop sandblasting from sanding roads, you know, driving through in the wintertime, you're going to get a lot of sand that's going to get stirred up and it's going to keep hitting the gel coat. So that hopefully will prevent that. It'll also stop any really nasty road grime, like maybe oils and stuff from sticking up. Just make it easier to, the, to, to clean. And this is all there is to it. See that? There you go. It was easy to put on and it's really easy to remove. Yeah, so. So far so good? So far so good. Now the great thing about this is that we did, we hit a lot of uh, rain in Georgia and, and, and North Florida and that washed the boat basically. So it actually doesn't look that bad. And that's all there is to it. It's amazing that I thought for sure this stuff would have maybe, you know, I thought peeled it would have come peeled off on the, you know, going down the highway with the wind catching it, but well, it didn't. The rain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Looks fantastic. Yeah, I was more concerned about the wind ripping it off, but I mean, it's like. Looks good. Yeah, it looks great. It really did a good job. Okay. So, what I'm always doing, I'm always checking the temperature of these rims. I put my hand, every time I stop at the gas station, I check the temperature of the rims. I want to make sure my bearings aren't overheating. And I'm doing that. And I'm looking to see if all my lug nuts are tight. Okay? And so I do that while all my wheels, I put my hand against her, checking to make sure everything's fine. And then the, the, the back strap again, you see the way I twist it here? I twist this so you don't get the vibrations. If you get the vibrations, it's going to start hitting the gel coat and wearing on that. And right here, again, I just, I put some, uh, just one of my old shirts I put against here so it doesn't wear through the, uh, through the anti-fouling paint. It did anyways, I think. But anyways, this, again, I just put on the cleat. Now, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. There is lifting lugs in the in inside, underneath, but I can't see a good place to tie it down. So, th this is the best I could come up with. If anyone has any better ideas, please let me know. Um, anyhow, so that's it. I just left my... This is my kicker motor. I left this one down. I didn't see any reason why I should have that one sticking up. It's plenty high. It's probably the same height as the uh, the 250 is sitting here. And of course, I have my I have my um, transom savers. Transom savers. I don't know if it's called the transom. I think it just saves the uh, hydraulics. So these things go on there. There's no actual transom saver to go from here to here. Oh, okay. I, I, I and you know what? I've now trailered the boat enough that there has not been any cracks. I've been checking to see if there's 
See right here? This is the first place you're gonna see cracks in your glass is right here. If you start seeing stress cracks in the grass in the glass right here, then that's probably the, the bouncing of the motor on that's caused that. It could be in the water, it could be from trailering. But there's nothing here, so there's no problems there. Alright, so this so this this is the frame for our uh, for our canvas top and it's it's pretty uh, it's fragile let's put it that way there's a lot of play in it and it it can jiggle side to side maybe six inches or so and that is gonna after a while that might fracture some of your your it's gonna cause your your nuts to come loose it could uh, or your bolts I mean and uh, it could maybe break here so what I've done is I've added some straps and there's this doesn't move now now I didn't over the important part is you don't over tighten this you're just doing it just to hold it in place but there's no movement in this and there's no movement you're not going to get the wear and tear so that's what this one here the reason I put this one down like this is because we want to walk through here I don't want to have to go to the other side there's room for me to to go through the other thing I've done if you look up here I've tied down my antenna so I just used one of these these twist ties and I love these things so anyways this holds the antenna yeah it holds it on a bit of an angle but uh, it doesn't matter as long as it's not moving it's not wearing okay so what else I've done is also pulled the plug on the boat the reason why I've done that is because I have pulled all the fuses for the 24 7 bilges I think I have three bilges in this boat and so if for some reason water gets in, whether it's from all the rain, ends up inside my boat through the uh, lazarettes, um, there's a place for this water to come out because my bilges don't work. The reason why I pulled the fuses on my 24-7 uh, um, fuse panel is because these, these bilges run every... I forget every five seconds I can't remember what it is but it just uses battery and I there's no reason to have it on when you're trailering it or when you're sitting at home sitting in the in the driveway so I what I do to save that is just make sure you pull the plug out now I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a wrench on that obviously and tighten that up but that is something I'm going to tighten up before I put it in the water There we go. All right. Oh boy. Yeah, we got that first day getting every getting settled in is not an easy day. So much stuff to move. I mean, you can't put everything in the boat. I mean, it just makes the boat too heavy. So a lot of stuff has to go in the tow vehicle. So fortunately, we have a a van. It's a great van. It's three-quarter ton Chevy, and I, we had a a Quigley four-wheel drive system put in it. That's just it's just a machine. Really like it. Once all the chores were done, we took some time to rent kayaks and explore the mangrove islands. What a relaxing day we had, soaking up the sun and gazing at the diverse ecosystems this area holds. Around each corner, you could see any number of fish, stingrays, algae, coral, iguanas, and possibly even have a visit with a gentle giant, the manatee. Manatees are typically found in shallow coastal areas and rivers where they feed on seagrass, mangrove leaves, and algae. Manatees have no natural predators, but humans have played a large part in their demise. Pollution, red tide, and boat propellers kill or injure many manatees annually. It is illegal to feed or disturb manatees, but as they do need fresh water to survive, they occasionally seek unusual sources of water like the drain of a boat or a leaky hose. Oh, you know what it might be? I think it's just a, uh, like yeah. a scupper or something yeah. like that. Yeah, look at that. Look at his little leg, his little arm bent over. Oh man, look, look at how tiny their eyes are. After the friendly manatee left, we had a visit with some dear old friends who came to share their navigational advice and a wonderful meal with us. We decided to anchor offshore where the no were less bothersome 
and watch the sunset. The crew wanted to watch the sunset while we enjoyed our picnic. Uh, but the captain didn't want to stern tie to the mooring ball, but he obliged. Well, we didn't expect the tropical storm to hit so fast or so hard, but in we no time, had rain pummeling in the stern. Michael and I had to jump to it and swing the boat around, tie up on the bow. Next time, I think we should probably listen to the captain's opinion more closely. Give that man a towel. Wow. What a I jump. almost couldn't hold it there. Julia had to help me. I know. We, we told uh, we told Julia to go out there and help you. <laughs> Rick, while he's drinking in between his drinks. <laughs> and then we pulled enough slack and I could run to the front with it and get it on. Yeah, I but saw see, that. See, now it's all dry if, up in here now. If everything yeah. went perfectly, it wouldn't be as fun. This is great. Thanks for turning some... the boat around. <laughs> Gotta have some drama. <laughs> here. Take that off and put it on here. That one's done. What other stuff you want? Here, hold that so you can put that in here. That whole one. The black water. Mike, do you want some soy here. sauce? Okay. Mike, soy sauce? Yes, please. What do you got there, Rick? That is I awesome. I have uh, bluefin tuna, mm -hmm. potato salad, mm -hmm. fresh cooked, mm -hmm. made this morning. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Salad blanched, just cut up and made. It cannot get any better. It cannot. Yeah. I'm surprised. And and I'm here with with my really good friends. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, Julia and Mike's getting his plate. And there's Blanche yeah. inside. How come good it's times. blinking and the screen went off? Uh, because you have to keep touching it. Oh, yeah. yeah, just like yourself. Hey, <laughs> I know you want to. You know how Blanche keeps telling you to stop doing that? That's that's what you have to do with this one. Mm. Mm. It doesn't get any better than this. It really oh does. my it gosh. doesn't. I'd pay I'd pay three four hundred dollars for this meal. That's what you would pay for this. <laughs> Blanche, you know what you, you are the best. Mm. Blanche, oh we're roughing it. Oh, we're roughing it. Yeah, here. we're roughing it. We're camping with tuna that you'd you'd get you'd spend hundreds of dollars. Do you want? On well, just like that, the tropical storm had passed, and our wonderful evening with our dear friends led to a beautiful morning in a place that we cherish, the people, and the beauty of nature that surrounds us. But as my mother used to say, never a dull moment. The next morning, we decided to okay, take the Michael problem? to the hospital as a result yeah. of his continued swelling well, in his foot. Our first day down in the Florida Keys, I was relaxing and something bit my ankle. I'm not sure whether it was a spider or an iguana, but... Uh, I think you'd have known if it was an iguana. Yeah. I, Whatever it was, it uh, it caused my foot to swell up, and uh, it's it's and it just got worse and worse and worse. So now the doctors prescribed me some antibiotics, and I'm going to take my tetanus shot again because I don't know when the last time I had it. So that's where it's taken. But this is really um, hard in here. I think this is where it bit me, and uh, and anyways, it's it's my foot was like this yesterday. It was like a football, and it's better today. I took some. Um, Antihistamine. Antihistamine. Benadryl. And Benadryl, and it went mm -hmm. down a bit. I kept my foot elevated overnight. And see, tomorrow we're leaving for the Bahamas. Actually, tonight we're going to anchor out on Rodriguez Island, behind Rodriguez Island, and then from there we leave for the uh, for Bimini. we got about a 65-mile run. So I want to make sure this is taken care mm -hmm. of. So Better gonna, safe than so I'm getting So yeah, I'm getting on antibiotics here, and hopefully it'll clear up by the time we hit the, uh, the Berry Islands. Ah. Join us next week as we cross the Gulf Stream and arrive in the Bahamas. You'll see how the boat handled and what happened along the way. Until then, thanks for watching, and we always appreciate a like and subscribe and your comments and questions. Really, it's good for morale at Expedition CNES headquarters. Shoot us a message.